And we're moving on up, moving on up to the penthouse, to the penthouse. Gary put the penthouse in Andy's name. Oh, she's moving on up, moving on up to the penthouse, to the penthouse. Oh, yeah, okay. Anyway, folks, we are talking season four, episode seven, moving on up. Now, I thoroughly enjoyed the episode. I watched it last night live. Um, no complaints from me, mainly due to the fact that, well, my live stream from Dish Network went without a hitch. I think it only paused to, like, buffer maybe once or twice. And that was it. So I was able to finish the episode right at 10 o'clock or, like, no later than 10.05. Um, had a great time live tweeting last night. This episode felt like season one. Which could either be a good or bad thing, depending. And that's it. But, also the live stream went great, too. We had a good amount of people on there. A lot of great conversations. And most importantly, my nephew watched the show with me because we were playing Sonic on my Switch. And I'm like, okay, it's like 8.55. You got to go to bed. I want to watch Sisters. Wait, what? Yeah, I want to see what you do. So basically, he sat on my bed as I'm at my computer tweeting and watching the show and taking notes this kid is laughing at danny and fatima and zach he is a zatima fan that one scene we had of zach and fatima he loved it and then as soon as i said you know they got a spinoff coming up and he's like what i want to see it and i'm like okay wait can he watch it though because i know it's going to be on bet plus so and <laughs> I'll, I'll cross that bridge when we get there but during the commercial breaks when they had the Bruh commercial, when they had the Ruthless commercial, when they had the Game per commercial, when they had even the Oval commercial, he's like, hey, that's, that, you should review, you should watch that. I'm like, if you only knew, <laughs> I've already done it. But um, when they showed the Medea Homecoming t uh, promo, which I think was a new one because it had footage in it that was different than the official trailer that was released uh, like a week or so ago. He just fell out laughing. He cannot wait for that movie to come out next week. But, um, yeah, I enjoyed the episode. There were people who said it was boring, that it was filler, and it dragged on. I can completely understand why people felt that way. I think for myself, because I was watching the episode with someone else, that we both had similar reactions to, you know, the same scenes. I feel like that helped me make it through the episode more than um I normally would especially because I was not feeling the oval this week at all if if you don't believe me check out my review for the oval um what was it called uh get a grip this episode to me personally I give it a 9 out of 10 for the enjoyment factor but if, the, if here's how I feel this episode possibly could have gotten a 10 out of 10 if they didn't wait so long to have Andy go up to the penthouse, if all the women went up to the penthouse, maybe within the first 20 minutes, I would have been cool with it. But to drag it out so long that you just knew Karen's pregnancy announcement would be the last thing as the cliffhanger, it would have been better. I think that, you know, the first scenes where she's, you know, calling uh, management or she's... Uh, looking over the paperwork she's talking with gary that that pacing was i was fine with that but when the women came in and they just stood around and took forever for all of them to go upstairs that's the part that got me here's where my nephew had me laughing so hard because i'm like wow a person who's never watched the show said this there was this moment before it was before sabrina and Danny came from back downstairs. They came down from the penthouse. Um, my nephew was like, where are the other two at? Because <laughs> it had been so long since they had left. He was like, wait, where are they at? <laughs> so the pacing, it was weird. But overall, I enjoyed the episode for what it was. I hope Andy keeps the penthouse just because I, I like that new set piece. And honestly, I don't think Tyler would have that entire penthouse set up only used for like one or two episodes so let's get into it oh also most importantly i want to get this out of the way first during the live stream last night there were people who were telling me jeremy i unsubscribed from the channel and i hit subscribed again 
and I reset the bell notification. So if you aren't getting notifications, you need to unsubscribe from the channel, hit subscribe again, and then hit the bell and select all, and you should get notifications when I upload content and go live. So I wanted to get that out of the way, but let's jump into this. So Andy comes home to her empty apartment, just like that iconic meme from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air's final episode where Will is looking around the house one last time before he leaves. And, you know, she calls the doorman, I believe Randy the doorman, and he tells her that Mr. Robinson, the building manager, had her apartment up for sale and all of her stuff was moved to the penthouse because it was just purchased by her. Now, since the manager, Randy, lives on the same floor as Andy, he will be coming to see her immediately. Now, she's told that the penthouse is hers. All she needs to do is sign the paperwork. And she's like, let me think about it. I mistakenly tweeted out a few minutes later. You know, it's interesting how Andy spent like 10 plus minutes talking to Gary about how she's done with him. You can't buy her back, yada, yada, yada. Yet she signed the paperwork. My bad. It, I mean, but she left the door open. Let's be real here. If she really was done with Gary, if she didn't want the penthouse, she would have been like, look, I did not authorize any of this. I want my stuff moved back immediately. She would not have been like, well, hey, let, let me think about that. No, if she didn't want to think about it, then she would have asked for her stuff to be put back in place take the sale off take the for sale sign off for apartment asap so i was wrong when i said hey she signed the paperwork but if she was really about not going up to the penthouse if she was really about keeping this apartment she would have rectified the situation right then and there that's all i'm saying um, so, and also for people like Jeremy, you should be an actor on Tyler Perry show. That role that Mr. Robinson had where he just had like a one-off appearance. He showed up, said a few lines. That's the kind of role I would like. You know, I don't need, I don't need a starring role. Like, you know, just making a little role. Like, hell, even Randy, the guy on the phone, that could have been me. <laughs> and, and I would have been satisfied. But basically, you know, Mr. Robinson came in, did his thing and he left. Now, um, Andy then gets a phone call. I thought it was Gary. Uh, but Ra uh, Randy's like, hey, uh, Mr. Borders is here. And it's technically I was right. But, you know, it was Gary and he wanted permission to move or excuse me, buzz him up to the apartment. So uh, Gary comes in and really to sum up this scene it's about, yeah, I bought the penthouse and everything. And I got a new therapist. He's a, it's a male therapist now. I, I, I'm just trying to show you I changed and. You know, you don't want to believe Gary because it's Gary and, you know, he's really... It's funny because I don't know who was less convincing, Gary, that he had changed and he would be a different person, or Andy, that, you know what, hey, I can buy my own stuff, this isn't impressing me, you know what, you did all this behind my back without asking for my consent first, first the Rolls Royce, now the penthouse and yada yada, and this and that, but you can't buy me back. Well, I know you like nice things. Yes, but I can get my own nice things. And um, while he's trying to convince her, she's like, leave, I'm done. And then next thing you know, the women come in and Gary's like, oh, shit. <laughs> because it's funny because he knows like, yep, I know how this is going to go. And he's still pleased like, hey, can we go talk? And then Danny's like, hey, Gary, she said no. We got the door for you. Good to see you, ladies. Not good to see you. So he leaves. And then the girls are like, um, what the hell is going on here? So... She basically says, uh, he bought me a penthouse. <laughs> I don't know why, but just the way she said that, it's like, uh, Gary, he bought me an off-brand purse. <laughs> but no, it's like, he bought me a penthouse. Wait, what? <laughs> and it's funny how all of a sudden, Danny literally, you know, shifted into her season one persona. And that's what pissed me off about the episode the most, because over the past week, I could not stand Danny's ass based on the situation involving her and Preston and how she handled that. And now we... Re this was the Danny that I know and love, the one who makes the one-liners, who speaks what everybody's thinking. She's blunt to the point, and, well, she's telling some truth. She's spitting some facts. And in the midst of, you know, wait, Gary did that? Oh, wow. Karen, quote-unquote, let it slip. Somebody in the live said, 
Jeremy, I don't think that Karen accidentally brought up the car. I think she did that on purpose. Because remember, Sabrina and Danny don't know. Season three was the season where, uh, well, actually, it was at the very end of season two where Gary had, quote unquote, moved in with Andy temporarily. Hey, can you do me a favor and not tell your girls everything about, you know, me and you because they obviously don't like me? And then in season three, when she would talk to like Robin or Fatima, she would say, you know, hey, I used to tell my girls everything, but now I don't. And then that's the part that confused me in season four when Andy just decided, hey, I'm going to tell Karen about the Rolls Royce situation. And remember, it was just uh, Karen who knew. That's why this really felt like season one, because more often than not, you know, as Danny would say, y'all holding out on us. Well, Andy and Karen alone knew about the car and Sabrina and Danny didn't. But then again, that's what really made this episode shine. Like later on on the basketball court, it's just when characters trade information and then when they react to it it's genuine shock because i didn't know you knew that person or i didn't know this person did that for you where did all this come from but from there you know andy got the damn song stuck in my head he's sorry and he wants you back how, how did it go he's sorry yeah oh i'm sorry i'll stop no don't stop it's cute when she sings it but i hate when it's stuck in my head he's sorry and he wants you back. He's no, I, I'm singing it better than that cop because that cop was like, he said he's sorry, and he wants you back. He says he's sorry, and he wants you back. Get out of here. Wait, are are you for real? I'm for show. Sure. Get out of here. Okay, I'm done. Let me stop. Let me stop. All right. So, um, Danny's like, well, I think you should go move on up like George and Wheezy. Danny's like that person who you can't stand, but when they make a joke, you got to crack a smile because it's like, shit, I hate you, but you made me laugh. Look, I don't want to hate Danny, but she has not been like the same for quite a while. So that's why this episode was like a breath of fresh air. It was slow in places. You could argue that it was boring at times. You could say that it just was not that great, but this was the First episode where in a while where Zatima was in the back of my mind because once the girl I want to skip over I want to talk about the Karen and Andy stuff together but let me talk about how Danny and Sabrina reacted to the penthouse so they're on the elevator because it's like first Danny's like well I'm going to check this penthouse out where do you go elevator and then you know it should be you know a button that takes you right to the penthouse and then sabrina's like well i'm kind of curious too and uh, i always want to throw this out here some people in the comments in the live stream are like jeremy did you notice that it seems like sabrina is more like a you know she hasn't gotten much to do this season outside of just you know going to that restaurant with calvin i don't mind that because this was only episode seven this was only episode seven there are what 22 episodes this season I'd much rather Sabrina just kind of be there for right now as opposed to her just being intrusive and being, you know, the Sabrina I don't like. Her time is coming. I feel like Sabrina will get something to do. It's just not her time yet. So Sabrina tags along. They're on the elevator. Danny's phone is ringing. I'm thinking, Lord, I know that ain't pressing, but she says, no, it's Logan. It's that cop. He just keeps, you know, calling me. So they get to the penthouse the elevator opens it's like cousin skeeter that theme song ski knows how he does and you know what ski to flow if you know that song then you are a boss for real like that's that's the vibe i got when they go to the penthouse dun, 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 dun. skeeter is the one i need okay or actually andy would be like gary is the one you need or actually no that's danny singing he knows how to get down bought my girl a penthouse baby all right so these two are just blown away. It was like kids in the candy store. That's how I want to feel. Well, actually, moving forward to when Andy comes up there, if I finally get a house to just walk in, I don't care the shit's empty. You know, honestly, I want to get it furnished, you know, if it comes with it, if I buy a house. But to just walk in and know that, oh, my God, this is mine. It's in my name and everything. That's the feeling I want because... They were just walking around. 
I want to be honest here, even though I don't review assisted living anymore, given that that show only takes place in a living facility, that's my reaction if, oh my god, they actually have a new set piece for that show. But regardless, um, they're just in awe. They're looking at the kitchen, the sofa, and like, you know, there's points where Sabrina's like, okay, I think we should go. No, 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 no. I, I want to move in here. And Sabrina's like, yeah, me too. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what to say. I, I mean, it was... Tyler Perry knows how to put together a set piece. Look, I know sometimes the scripts can be repetitive, scenes can drag on, but when Tyler puts a set together, Tyler puts a set together. He he recreated the White House. That alone should tell you. I think I need to make a few phone calls. Hey, Tyler, um, Andy's new penthouse, is that available for rent? You know, like, how much would it cost to spend, like, you know, five days and five nights there? I'm just, I, I'm just blown away. I'm blown away. So, they look through the place, and then they get to the bedroom, and Danny's just, if I could do a montage of just Danny's reactions, because this was classic Danny, and I loved it. They both jump on the bed. Thankfully, you know, they didn't jump full body on the bed. Their, like, legs were sticking off. I'm like, I know y'all ain't going to jump on this woman's new bed with your shoes on. But, no, they just plopped on the bed like it was um, a ball pit at, like, Chuck E. Cheese or something. And they find something that says, play me. I'm thinking, Lord, this ain't no sex toy, is it? But, no, in the promo for next week, it's like a tablet or something. So, obviously, like a video message. So, they get, like, the Kanye, the, basically some expensive booze, top shelf, and they head downstairs. Now, while they're gone, um, let's see here. Karen and Andy chat, um, you know, the fact that she's been holding out on the Gary thing, you know, like she's holding up because Karen's like, so how, how are you doing? Because it seems like Karen is legitimately checking in on this situation. Now, Andy is curious and all of a sudden, well, actually, Karen's curious and now she wants to see it, even though she's like, nope, we can stay down here. And she says exactly what Gary said. Well, you do like nice things. Well, yeah, I can get my own. And Karen's like, well, that's the thing. It's nice, but the temptation, can you walk away from it? That was a good line. I really like this. So Karen um, invites Andy to sleep over at her place for the night. And Andy's like, she appreciates that. I like these moments like this. This is a far cry from the whole, I can't believe you would do this to me. You know I'm still in love with Zach. You know, when she showed up to Andy's job, was acting the ass. But this was like a moment where, okay, wow, I forgot that these two were friends based off, you know, recent events. So um, she once again asked if Fatima... Um, well, actually, no. First, Andy's like, hey, you're the one that got us all here together tonight, and it's supposed to be about you, but everything turned into a me situation. What's going on? And she says, hey, I'll tell everybody when, you know, we're all together. Also, did you call Fatima? Andy doesn't want to do it, but Karen's like, look, this involves her too. Could you please call? So, um, she goes to the other room. Wait, why are you going in the other room? Because, look, I don't know how she's going to respond, and I don't want to be caught in the middle of this. And when she walks away, Karen's like, well, you already are in the middle of this. Dun, dun, dun. So, let's go over to Zatima. And like I said, the penthouse was just so damn nice that I forgot about Zatima. Yes, I said it. I knew we were going to get a scene between them, but here we go. Now, um, Jake informs Zach that, hey, he knows a few people, and, um, you know, once things are set up, he can actually move in in a few days. And it seems like, you know, Zach was, you know, kind of offering like, well, hey, you shouldn't pay next month's rent. Why? So, you know, they can move in together. Now, the conversation shifts when Andy calls Fatima in the midst of, uh, well, actually, no, before that, it's told, hey, I'm not going to give Scary Gary the money because, you know, Fatima asks um, Zach about, wait, so Jake works with that Gary, and then the whole Gary was Andy's ex, and you know what, don't trust that guy, yada yada, but Andy calls, and Fatima declines the offer to come by, and then she says, I think I know what it's about, and what do you mean? Because Fatima puts it together, oh, well, I'm not going to tell you, I'll let Karen tell you what's going on, but here's the thing, if, uh, 
it's something that's really going down, then I will call you back to let you know that I'm coming. So she gets off the phone. And it's funny because she's on the phone and uh, she mentions Karen out loud while Zach is like, wait, what? From a distance? But as soon as she gets off the phone, she says, look, I think I know it's about the baby because, you know, maybe it's a situation where is she a rational person? And Zach for like, nope. But then she's like, he's like, well, you know what? Let me just not get into my feelings right now. She can be rational at times. And if a team was like, well, if it's your baby, and I'm like, thank God she's the one that's saying it. If it's your baby, maybe it's a situation where she wants to talk about co-parenting. So I'm going to go over there, but I'm going to change clothes to my jeans and whatnot, take my earrings off. You know, I'm always carrying my gun in my purse because if, hey, if I get try to get jumped, I ain't going down without a fight. But most importantly, when Zach is, you know, saying, yeah, you know what? Yeah, you're right. You know what? I, I think you're good. And then, she's, and then he's like, yeah, you know, Karen came by. And then Fatima's face just, you know, went blank. And this was just another comedic moment between Zach and Fatima. Some people were saying that the reason that it seems that Crystal and Deval, Deval, Deval have such great chemistry is the fact that the character of Fatima is similar to uh, his wife in real life. So if that's the case, I can definitely see how that works. And, um... You know, unfortunately, Zach never clarified. First of all, I didn't know she knew where I lived. She said that there was somebody official looking for me, but I didn't let her in the house. So I wonder if that's going to be a point of conversation when Fatima meets up with Karen in the next episode over at Andy's place. But the thing about it is, is, um, you know, Fatima doesn't want to go. Zach is like, no, you no, don't go over there. We're, no, we're, we're all about the here and now moving forward look at all this stuff we're not i'm not looking back but then again it's like you know i'm not saying he's going back with karen but if the baby is his he's going to have to you know deal with that but thankfully you know fatima even though she had that moment where it's like oh shit is she about to snap she is the rational thinking one in this situation where it seems some shit's going down it's like she can smell karen is trying to get her in a position to embarrass her with the pregnancy but she already knows but she's also giving Karen the benefit of the doubt that maybe it is something important. So as a result, I want to see what the smoke is over there so I can see that's a problem we'll deal with in the future if that's your baby. Which, I, again, I love that fact that she said it. And she says, I don't want to go unless you feel like, you know, it's right. So basically, are you asking my permission? Yes. And he agrees that fine, you should go. Some people are like, you know what? Zach knows, um what Fatima was capable of like when she went blank he probably had flashbacks to what um uh, she told him about about Hayden but other people are like you know what Zach knows that chick's crazy and he's going to set her loose on uh Karen I thought that was hilarious so he says you know hey I want to play some ball and uh they both you know get ready to go for their events that night and let me just skip ahead to the basketball scene that makes the most sense so they're playing basketball they're playing bass get I don't know why, but I've had this urge to rewatch Like Mike soon. Uh, I haven't watched that movie since, good lord, decades. I don't know, but but basically, um, it's Aaron, Zach, Gary, and Jake even showed up, and it seems that Jake, Gary, Zach, and Aaron were on the same team. And, you know, they make the last bucket and they win and all the other guys, you know, head off the court and it's just these four dudes. And um, even though I never even thought about it until just now, how come Gary and Zach are the only ones who aren't wearing a shirt? Is this supposed to be an eye candy moment for the ladies or something? I don't know. I just didn't realize it until I was rewatching the scene for context for, um, you know, the beef between Aaron and uh, Zach in this scene. But... Whatever it is, what it is. I mean, fair is fair, right? We get those lingerie scenes of Andy, so... Eh. Makes me wish I didn't eat, like junk food so much. I could have muscles like that. Wow, the ladies. Anywho, so, uh, basically, the game, you know, is over. And this was one of my favorite moments of the episode, simply because of the fact that we had a true bro, a bro moment. Yes, this isn't bro, it's sisters, but it's interesting to see this dynamic of these four characters because Gary didn't know that Zach is, or excuse me, Gary didn't know that Aaron was dating Zach's ex and then also finds out about Fatima being, <laughs> 
Zach's girl. And I love the fact that, you know, Gary's like, oh, damn, none of them like me. And, hey, what did they say about me? But I love how Zach is like, look, you know, if a teammate ain't like that, you know, about the drama and whatnot, you know, like some women I know. And he was, like, taking jabs at Karen. And he's like, hey, well, just please don't, you know, let um, anything she say influence how you feel about me. And it's like, yeah, she ain't saying nothing about you. It's like, um, well, you're not going to talk about me tonight are you it's like bro as soon as i get all that basketball court you are you are not coming up in conversation and i just love this dynamic because it just shows you that unlike the women it's like look bro we hang out we play ball you help me with my stocks and whatnot but that's it like when i get home i ain't talking about you i won't be with my woman and that's when you know the jabs with aaron happened because there was about to be a game between these you know what hey i got another game in me but um then Gary pulls him to the side, but it's Andy related. But let me focus on this. When Zach and Aaron have their back and forth, some people are like, well, what the hell does Zach have a B4 with Aaron? That's a that's a loaded question that I will have to do a separate video on. But for me personally, why exactly is Aaron getting so worked up? He's getting ready to, you know, throw hands over Karen when she's not even with you. Karen told you last week, I want to be single now. I need space. I'm still into Zach, even though I know he's moved on. You're definitely not the bait father's child. Aaron, simping ain't pimping. Like, if Zach was taking jabs at you, then you could be like, Calvin, you know what? Hey, I want to fight when I'm disrespected. And it's funny because I'm rewatching the scene. Yeah, I'm definitely doing a video on it. And he's, yeah, he's taking jabs at Karen because it's like, you know, Fatima's not going to run him out or say anything about some personal. She's not like Karen. And it's like, oh, we're really doing this right now. And then, you know, Aaron was the one that made a jab at um, Zach in regards to, oh, wait, yes, yeah, she always tells me it wasn't long enough. You can tell that Duvall and Kevin, these guys are cool because their chemistry, like, you can kind of tell that Aaron was, like, smirking in the midst of this, so... These guys are cool. Like, you know, I feel like if they would have had that one-on-one -on -one game to blow off some steam, it would have been all, yeah, it would have been, it would have been good. But, um, the most important thing about this scene is when Gary takes Zach to the side and essentially it's like, hey man, I got, I got you, you know, I got something. It's like, uh, I feel like there are the wrong people asking you the right questions, giving you heat about this stock and, you know, maybe I can help you out with that. But in exchange, can you talk to Fatima to talk to Andy for me? basically manipulating the people around Andy. This is just once again showing the controlling, manipulative side of Gary that he hasn't changed. I mean, hell, if I remember correctly, there have been times where he tried to get Karen to talk to Andy on his behalf, but ain't no way. Can you imagine what that conversation was like? Hey, Fatima, baby, you know, assuming, well, not not real, not real, knowing what goes down with the sisters, but, you know, Fatima, Zach make it home that night. You know, babe had a great time at the game. You know, Gary was there. We chatted for a bit. He's, he's He seems like a cool dude. You know, he seems like a cool dude. Because I love how uh, Zach reacted like, Andy, fine as hell. How do you mess that up? Well, you know, when we first started seeing each other, I was still married. Oh, so I love the fact when Zach is trying to get the details, I was like, Gary would have been like clear as his throat. <clears throat> let, me, let me recap the first three seasons of the show for you. So I just love that Tyler had this bro, bruh moment. And it really reminds me like, damn, yeah, bruh is another show. But I just love the men, the male dynamic on this show as well. I feel like I would have rather seen another 15 minutes of this scene alone as opposed to, you know, the women just standing in or mainly Andy and Karen standing in her empty apartment for most of the episode. But yeah, he's trying to get Zach to work. Look, all I'm saying is this. I'm I, I'm glad Zach walked away because he's like, man, no, you slime me as hell. Let me get, get my ball back. I'm about to get up out of here. Zach, come on now on the shield. No, 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 man. I'm good. I'm good. Kind of like Andy in the penthouse, let's hear him out because Zach let his morals guide his judgment, which is a good move. But you also have to pay attention to what Gary said. The fact that he is aware that there are people who are asking the wrong questions or excuse me, the wrong people are asking the right questions. So you really have to think of it this way where... Do, is Gary involved with this somehow? But then when you watch the promo for next week, it's like, it looks like he is. So what if Zach did accept that offer where it's like, 
hey, man, I can't promise anything, but I can at least tell the team about, you know, how when it comes to us on the basketball court and whatnot, I ain't got no beef with you. I think you're a cool, I think you're an all right guy. So, eh. But now the final scenes to talk about, we go back to the apartment. It's um, Andy and the women. And the movers are supposed to come tonight to get Andy's stuff back uh, because I think Andy had just gotten off the phone with Gary. And the girls come back, you know, and they say, look, y'all need to go up because they are once again about um, Karen telling them what's going on. It's like, okay, let me pour some of this. Karen's like, no, it's like, oh, yeah, it must be the preacher, man. And, you know, uh, Sabrina and Danny are teasing Karen about him. But Andy's like, come on, girls. And Karen's like, look, well, I have an announcement, but y'all can't be getting drunk first. Can you at least let me tell you what it is before you start drinking? And then before she can even say it, it's like, look, let me, no, no, tell us upstairs. No, I can tell you right here. It's like, we ain't got no seats or nothing. All she had to do was say right then and there, but they dragged them up to the penthouse. And, um, you know, it's interesting because of the fact that we get to the scene that uh, Andy gets off the elevator. And the most important thing about this scene isn't how Andy is reacting, but pay attention to Karen throughout the duration of this scene. Like the moment they step off the elevator, um, Andy is like, you know, I think I tweeted this out. Andy is acting like she wanted to showcase at uh, the Price is Right. And um, just look at Karen's face. Like the elevator door opens because didn't Sabrina and Danny say, how'd y'all get in? We got on the elevator and hit P for penthouse. Wait, what about security? And then Andy's like, no, I think it's a situation where they knew I was coming up there. But yeah, literally, literally if you go back and watch that scene, look how Karen has like a mm -hmm, look on her face. Andy's like, oh. Sabrina and Danny are like, mm -hmm, yep, yep. Mm, this is nice. Karen's like, look at all this bullshit. <laughs> so from there, you know, Andy is like, you know, she can't even speak. She sees the mural um, and, you know, they go to sit back, have a drink. And then the episode ends with her announcing the pregnancy. So with that being said, I really did enjoy this episode. If you couldn't tell from this review, I can't wait to do my separate discussion videos. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below uh, about this episode of Sisters moving on up. Again, I can definitely see how people would think this is a boring episode. It is wasn't perfect in regards to there could have been there's there was room for improvement but considering we didn't waste time on characters like calvin maurice or q i think that helped the flow of the episode this episode in my opinion truly captured what the show is about the sisters but you also had a great moment with the bros at the basketball court and as a team a moment at zach's new place so with that being said let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as i mentioned before like and subscribe or unsubscribe and hit subscribe again to get notifications working make sure you hit the thumbs up button to show you like the video follow me on social media links are in the description below and if you would like to donate to the channel feel free to do so on paypal or cash app 